ladies and gentlemen we are here in Karakal, Pakistan which is the autonomous country inside Uzbekistan and we are on a journey to RLC which has dried out and we are on a journey very long journey actually all the way from Khiva to RLC and then back to Khiva so we will be on the journey around uh, 12 hours maybe even longer and for now it's our lunch break and we have came to here called Gonirat Cafe we're gonna check out to see what they have and eat some lunch Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum Super Fine, nice, mashallah They also speak English here, very good And I'm wearing Kara Kalpak and that's where the name of the Kara Kalpakistan comes from Kara means black and Kalpak means hat so black hat people and that's why I bought a traditional hat as well This is the entrance to the restaurant Wow, that looks super mooper fancy I'm gonna check out what they have and order some food Assalamu alaikum Can you ask him what's the traditional Karakalpak food here? Karakalpak is now also the This is all written in Kyrillic what what he has he's saying that Tukumbarek is like a dumpling to his day ah is it Karakalpak food it's at a Karakalpakski it's Karakalpakski da da okay Okay, which one is this? He's talking about? Tukhum Berek. Tukhum Berek in Harda? Nerede? Yeah. Ha, burada. Tukhum Berek. Kirmish. Kirmish ne? Kirmish Berek ne olur? Bu tipe Tukhum Berek diye altına koyuyor. İçi de goş böyle. Ha, es. Gömme değil mi o? Gömme var, es bir aşk. It's like, looks like bir aşk. Like bir aşk, okay. I want to try this. Kirmish Borek. Kirmish Borek Karakalpakski? Okay. Ya Kachuk Kirmish Borek? And then whatever you want, brother. Do you have Red Bull? Red Bull? Adrenaline. Adrenaline, okay. I didn't adrenaline. Ili Fanta. We can drink Fanta. Okay, Fanta. Fanta. Okay. Fanta, big Fanta. Bachelor Fanta. Rahmat. Spasiva. Seems like at the same time. It's a restaurant, they're also selling some clothes here. They have some hat with some branded hat. They have also like flip flops and shoes. So in case you break yours, you can actually get here as you are eating in the lunch place. All right, I will see what type of food arrives. I want to try some Krakow Park food and uh, we will see what comes and I will show you our food experience as well. Check this out, this is such a beautiful restaurant, very colorful, lots of uh, photos on the wall and they also have uh, this type of place where you can sit. Maybe you're gonna sit here or just normal table. Brother, you wanna sit here or? Yeah, let's sit. Ah, oh, there's a cat too. Hi cat. How are you? <laughs> nice. I think we're gonna sit with cat here. Okay. Okay. All right. I go wash my hands and then we go wait for the food, guys. See you later. Rahmat. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our food here. You are. Uh, you have. What's the name of the food? Mante. Mante. Wow, that looks. Huge portions. It's a meat inside, right? Yes. All right. Enjoy. And also, I ordered my food, which is Karakalpak food, and this was the name: Kirmish Börek, and it's approximately thirty thousand uh, Uzbek soms, which is around two dollar and forty American cents. I also ordered uh, extra uh, yogurt next to it. In local language, it's called katuh, and I'm gonna actually eat it together. 
So this is how our kırmış börek looks like. It has a little pieces. I think the gentleman said 12 pieces are there. I'm not gonna count it. And we also have the kind of like tomato paste. This might be a little bit spicy. We're gonna try it out. Brother, you can start. Don't wait for me, please. You too, enjoy. How you say in the local language? Yakımlı iştaha. Yakımlı iştaha is the, the way to say uh, bon appetit in local language. So let's try this out, guys. Mm. Very good. There's actually meat and onions inside. As you can see, it looks great and tasty. And the tomato paste is not spicy at all. It's just a little bit spicy, but I think it's from the pepper. And yeah, that's our lunch experience here. We're gonna enjoy this. And uh, they also turned on a huge TV with some music in the background. And more drivers arrived, so more families are having lunch experience here. Quite a cool place. All right, guys, we'll see you later on. Ladies and gentlemen, hanımlar ve canaplar, welcome to Aral Sea. We are in the land of the Republic of Karakalpakstan and as an owner to Karakalpak people and Karakalpakstan, I am also having black hat. As I mentioned before, Karakalpak means black hat, Kara means black and Kalpak means hat. and. Uh, basically black hat that's how the nation's name gets translates to and as an owner i also got a hat to come explore this region which is one of the coolest places and also the saddest place i have ever been aral sea uh, right now it almost doesn't exist and currently i am walking on the the ground of the sea where it used to be water and this Muinak was the flourishing uh, fish port in during the Soviet Union but as of now as you can see it's only junk of some metals and the junk of these boats are just sitting literally on the sand and of course those ships are kind of brought from different parts of the sea to here but this is kind of like memory and kind of museum open air museum type of a place they have created here so aral sea which is the biggest man-made disaster in the world uh, there are lots of disasters man-made we can count chernobyl as one we can make uh, talk about the RLC itself and also our planet has lots of risk by the people how the forests are getting destroyed how the small lakes are getting disappearing and uh, during the Soviet Union this uh, actually there was a huge competition with America and uh, it was about the cotton industry so basically Soviet Union was trying to compete with the demand of the cotton in the region and uh, what happened is that basically the RLC it has actually two different uh, rivers which actually comes and feeded uh, RLC uh, basically with the water but what happened is that basically they changed the banks of the rivers uh, coming to the RLC and uh, they use that water to basically uh, plant the cotton and try to increase the industry in the region and as a result basically the water didn't come and reach to the RLC and uh, slowly by time basically that's what we have ended up with only sand and the junk of metals and uh, yeah basically this is the result of man's 
steps and the decision making process that destroyed the whole scene. So RLC is actually located basically on the west side of Uzbekistan and currently we are in the Karakal Pakistan and, and as a part of actually RLC is also located um, kind of in Kazakhstan um, area so basically no, north part of uh, RLC is actually in the Kazakhstan lands and the south of it is actually here in Uzbekistan slash Karakal Pakistan area so very very sad history and uh, now you know exactly why this happened and it's not just a natural disaster but it's actually man-made disaster just due to the increasing the cotton industry in the area they change the rivers banks of the rivers and then we end up having this result we are currently actually at the bottom of the sea i am walking around here as you can see the water could go all the way up there and as I have mentioned, Moynak was one of the biggest and the best flourishing port city in whole Soviet Union. You can imagine how big was the Soviet Union. And this was one of the best and the most important fishing port in the whole Soviet Union. And yeah, so it was giving lots of uh, jobs to the people. And uh, you can imagine how beautiful was the surroundings here. When there's no water then there's no life basically when you're visiting here you can actually get to experience inside of the boats and you can actually see how they are been how they have been structured some people come here and leave their names on the walls of the ships as well but you also get the opportunity actually go all the way up if you want we're gonna go upstairs check out how inside looks like i have to mention that this is my second time actually in the rlc and i came here when my channel was really really small and i wanted to bring more light and bring more awareness to the situation here in the rlc so you know exactly what happened and maybe and hopefully we don't repeat our mistakes again and again so this is the area where the captain would be standing and controlling the ship right from here and yeah you can ask why these ships are here there are several reasons for it basically the water go away that's a shortest answer i can give you and the second part of it is that i think some people actually were hoping that the water will come back at some point and another part of it is that when the water went away then it became really expensive actually to move these ships from place to place and if there's no water then you can imagine how expensive it becomes to move the all these gigantic machines from place to place so naturally people leave it here and uh, you can actually, when you explore the rest of the RLC, you can actually find more junk uh, ship like this all around the RLC. So it's a very, very sad part of it. And yeah, that just kind of gives you the perspective why these things are here. But mostly they are just brought here by the government to kind of make an attraction here for the people to come visit and understand what exactly has happened all right we have also another part there is actually two more gigantic ship which i want to show you and i'm gonna tell you more about karakal pakistan itself as well as um, what's the results of this rlc disappearing from here what does it mean for the people what does it mean to the nature what does it mean uh, regarding the economy as well so stay tuned and i will give you more story time on the other side guys I remember as two ship were here but apparently we have actually three of them and this is uh, another part of the Moynak kind of open-air museum which you can come visit 
actually for free you don't have to pay actually anything mm -hmm. and on top where uh, we have started our journey there's actually also RLC kind of museum you can go inside as well but this is probably the most exciting at the same time the most fascinating thing to see before we continue with our stories uh, one thing I want to mention that in a time actually RLC slash RL Lake was the fourth largest lake in the world so you can imagine how big and how huge uh, were this sea uh, RLC and right now we have almost nothing left behind there's still some water left if you continue journey to this way basically this is beginning of the sea and if you continue further to the Kazakhstan border there is actually they do tours from Uzbekistan too you can go and get to the level of the sea where you will be able to touch the RLC which is uh, I think few more years left to, to disappear completely there are some work getting done by the government by the politicians to bring try at least to bring the sea back but it's almost impossible thing to do as you can imagine there's not much water flowing in these areas as everywhere is kind of desert and not so much rains are happening as well so that makes it almost impossible mission to accomplish I mean what we have done as people as humans it's already done we cannot change that we cannot try to bring the time back or the sea back so that's a almost impossible mission as I have mentioned so about the consequences of this happening here in this area uh, as I mentioned this was one of the flourishing ports in the area which means there was lots of jobs there was lots of opportunities for the people to feed themselves out of this sea and uh, bring money to their families you can imagine how beautiful was it as a resort and a place for the people to come and relax so that means that went away and uh, people lost their jobs and they had to actually migrate to different parts of the Uzbekistan or Karakalpakistan and that was one bad side of it second bad and the horrible side of the story is the fact that how much people and uh, how much sickness the people get who lives around this area around the RLC as you can imagine when the sea and the water went away all this sand been exposed so everything became as a desert and at the same time all the salt from the water left down on the surface and that basically allows the wind to take all this dust and the, and the salt and bring it with the wind to different sides of the where people live basically to the villages to the towns and this way people start breathing that air and as you can imagine how dirty is that and that brings more sicknesses brings more cancer to the area and people normally have a throat cancer lung cancer and uh, other type of cancer and other type of uh, sicknesses just from living in the area they used to live and they haven't chose to make this happen and uh, disappear the RLC of course and uh, as a result that's what they get so when you do your research you can see the number of uh, sicknesses and uh, cancer is crazy number in this area so I always when I come here to RLC and when I always read about it when I see about it I always kind of compare it with the Chernobyl accident and uh, as much as it was um, it was also human-made disaster but it was more chemical reactions into it but here just uh, it's more like a natural disaster done by the people and uh, it's not exactly same same but you can imagine also uh, what was the numbers regarding the cancer in the areas uh, the Chernobyl affected in that in that region so interesting fascinating uh, area and the place to come of course very sad history and another thing this place um, kind of makes more problems is for Karakalpakstan Karakalpakstan Republic is actually autonomous country which is located inside Uzbekistan on the west side of Uzbekistan and it 
covers half of Uzbekistan exactly and what's happening is that actually when the both parties can agree and when the referendum can be done Karakal Pakistan actually can become independent country and that would be probably the craziest thing ever happening because uh, there's no any new country popped, in, popped up in Asia for uh, for decades so that would be interesting history to uh, to see but if the Karakal Pakistan wants to be free and uh, if they want to be, become independent currently they have their own flag they have their own language and they have their own ministry but they cannot completely be independent because one of the reasons is this RLC because RLC was a huge ec part of the economy in Karakal Pakistan region and right now almost it's just a disaster for the people living here. So from the economical perspective, Karakal Pakistan can become actually independent, but economy, uh, from the economical perspective, the country cannot sustain itself. So that basically creates more and um, more situation that actually doesn't allow the country to go for that route and make itself independent. So that's another part of sad side of the story. So there are lots of sad things about this place for sure. We can talk for hours and hours. And yeah, my objective was to come back here, just to make content and bring more awareness to the situation. And uh, if you have never heard about this, uh, I'm glad that I brought you to see exactly how the situation is. And yeah, you can make up your own mind think about the consequences as well and just understand what happened here so this was my job to come here as i was in uzbekistan make another content and actually film and show you how is the current situation right now here in rlc all right guys it's i think the rain is coming in a distance you can see the sky is getting darker and darker and we have a quite a long journey back to Khiva. so this was our last stop in Karakal, Pakistan, and I've been gladly took you on a journey here. So we'll see you later on, guys. Take a good care. The crazy clouds are coming. We have to continue our journey. And this is actually a second World War Memorial here. You can see the map of the RLC, how huge was it. This is 1960 and uh, I can actually show you much close by. Boss, you can, uh, you are security? Can you check with him, her, I don't know, is girl or guy security? Muhaviza? Listening music. Ha, Muhafiza. Yeah. yeah, security. Okay, uh -huh. you can. Uh, this is hundred thousand for him. Is uh, it's her, right? It's a woman. Her, yeah. her. Yes. Hadiya. Yeah. Yeah. Rahmat, rahmat. Thank you so much. Thank you. He, she's taking care of all this place here. She's Make... there. Muzeya. Yeah. What did she say? Yeah, uh, she's taking care of all of this. Okay. Tashakur. Thank you. Rahmat. Rahmat. All right, guys. I'm gonna take a look, much closer look for you to see how the RLC used to look like. As you can, oh, there was a thunder on the left side. This is the map of the RLC, 1960. And when I actually come to this side, you can see the massive difference. This is the present day and uh, currently I think we are somewhere right here and looking at the water almost nothing has left behind and I want to show you the views as well check this out guys it's getting a little bit more windy as the Sun goes down and the storm is coming behind us and you can see how sad at the same time very fascinating to see this that imagine the water was right here like you could just jump into the water from here but currently nothing has left behind 
and it's a massive desert it just opens up to the other side all the way to the Kazakhstan it's incredible so guys that was um, our journey wasn't easy I'm actually paying 100 American dollars to go from Hiva from my guest house all the way here and then we're gonna return back we left at 7 a.m. and uh, we're gonna be back to our hotel room or guest house around 8 9 p.m. so more than 12 hours will be on the journey and I pay $100 uh, for a personal tour to bring me here uh, stop in Nukus in the Karakal Pakistan um, capital city and then after we continue our journey back to Khiva where we came from so I was happy to bring you on this crazy and fascinating journey guys enjoy the views for now and we'll see you later on we are on a journey back to Khiva where we came from this morning we left around 7 a.m and we have a very long journey and this is the highway the roads are terrible there is this huge holes everywhere you go and we actually noticed that there's house here on the other side they're actually making a bread i would love to go see they're literally making a bread like outside they have a tender tender is where you will see exactly what is it they make basically the dough stick it on the wall and they make the tandoor and let's go check them out to see how they make it and make a business with them too salam alaikum salam alaikum yaksha says salam alaikum wow that's so cute they're making the bread very nice do they do they sell it no they Ah, they don't sell it. Oh, thank you so much. Places. Rahmat, Rahmat. Take a little bit. <laughs> wow, we have the fresh bread. This is how they make the Uzbeki bread. Not Uzbeki, the, it's the Karakalpak. Ah, Karakalpak bread. Yeah, this is Karakalpak bread? Okay. This is basically, they make the dough right there. And the mother puts design. Rahmat, Rahmat. <laughs> and then the dough is ready, and then they put it right here in this pillow, and then stick it on the wall, just like this. It's amazing. Peace. We can take one bread from them. Is possible? Yeah, had Yeah. Ah, thank you. Malaja, salam. Yaxshi san? Yaxshi san, mashallah. Oh, we are getting a fresh bread. How much is it? No, you can get it for free. No, you can ask ask how much you need to pay. If it's free. Yeah? She said she said free. Okay, thank you so much. Malaja, you good? <laughs> so nice. Basically, they live here in this house. Ah, they live here in this house, and they're making the bread just next to the roadside here. Actually, right. I have a. No, no, no. It's. This is for the kid, not for her. I have two two hundred thousand here. It's my gift. Yeah, to the sat, kid. Yo, sat satish değil. Bu uşağın. Yeah, uşağa. Yok yok. Bu yeah, bunu uşağa. <laughs> bu senin. Yaxşı. <laughs> you can buy something for yourself, okay? <laughs> Teşekkür. Rahmat, rahmat. Thank you so much. Rahmat, rahmat. Thank you. Thank you so much for the bread. Çörək üçün təşəkkür. Rahmat. Aşk olsun. Aşk olsun. Aşk olsun. Aşk olsun. Aşk olsun. Okay. Teşekkür. Rahmat. Wow, they were so cute and very nice family we have the bread for free without any expectations Karkal Pak people are amazing good stop right yes we were going really fast on this like bumpy roads and I realized that 
you know, there's uh, this family. I was expecting that they sell it, but they don't actually sell it. All right, guys, I think the sun goes down. It's good time to finalize this video here from Karakal, Pakistan. We visited the RLC and brother, Rahmatullah, thank you so much for your guidance and driving me very safely and very fast. Thank you, brother. All right, guys, signing out from Karakal, Pakistan. See you in the next video from Uzbekistan.